What's up, friends and family? So, you know, we're here in the beautiful Dominican Republic. So this video is going to be more about statistics and, you know, I heard a lot of stories and stuff going on. So I just want to give you guys numbers. I'm a numbers guy. I'm an information guy. So, you know, someone said, man, you think you're smarter than everybody. No, it's not that. I just do research. Um, I like to read. You know, my father used to make me read the newspaper a lot. Uh, I was just saying uh, my father made me do book reports. And like I said, true story. Uh, I used a book report from when I was in the fifth grade in high school and I got an A. You know, so I read a lot. I would go to the library. Yes, I went to the library. Excuse me. Because I just lo I just loved information. And speaking to my elders all the time, I never listened to what just the news tells me or what certain people tell me. I wanted to investigate myself. So a lot of information I give you is just for me investigating. You know, Google actually does work, but I never take the first couple of lines because sometimes they're there for a reason. So let me just drop some stats on you. But I will tell you a quick story about the media. So I was really into um, war and uh, I wanted to be a Marine. I missed my opportunity. I never went, but I was really into war. So during Desert Storm, CNN had great coverage and apologize. We're on a bumpy road to uh, Santiago. But um, CNN had, had like amazing coverage, on-site coverage for Desert Storm. And I would watch and they just, it blew my mind the stories they would tell about the amazing stories of the soldiers and everything. But it never really clicked the media control until later on, after 9-11. If you ever look, and you can go back and Google this, you can go back and search these stories. Every time soldiers died, uh, we lost 20 Marines in a helicopter crash or a rocket to air missile, you know, a rocket repel grenade, whatever. Uh, killed a bunch of Marines. Americans were pissed. We're losing, we're losing, we're losing soldiers, we're losing our kids, right? Two to three days later, there would always be a hero story. One soldier saves a platoon in a village from the Taliban. Oh man, we're doing great over there. We're so happy again. So I used to see it and I started picking up patterns of how every single time there was a bad story because the news had to put it out because it got out that a bunch of uh, you know people from the military died or something happened in the war. Then two to three days later, there was always a hero story. Go look it up if you think I'm BSing. Every time someone died and it was, a, it was such a sad, sad story and America was upset about whatever war we were in, two to three days later, it was a hero story. Um, Captain John, with six bullets and one grenade, saved an entire platoon in the village from the Taliban, all by himself. And we were like, yeah, man, go Captain John, he's the man. You know, we forgot about and didn't forget, but we pushed to the side that we just lost lives because Captain John saved the day. So anyway, the media has always been a controlling, and, and I've never really believed in anything they say, so I do my own investigations. Now... All the stuff that's going on now, uh, cousin Felix is here with me now, and he knows I had to yell at one of my friends. He posted a story to me, and he goes, look at this crap. And the headline read, the 14th death in Dominican Republic. I click on it because I want to read the story. I don't just believe the headlines. Headlines are to capture you and to get you to talking. But what about the story? The story reads, the woman died in 2016. So I said, my man, did you read the story you posted? No. But look what it says, another person died. I said, but you didn't read the story. The story says she died in 2016. This has nothing to do with the, the mystery deaths that are going on now. He goes, oh, okay. He posted another story. I said, are you going to read this one or am I going to read it? I went and read it. It was 2017. The news has been recycling deaths and just adding one to the death toll. So let's get into some stats real quick while I drink this nice cold beer. Some quick stats for you. Because unlike most people, I do the research. I want the information. I don't believe what I'm told. Let's talk about death on cruise ships. 200 people a year die on cruise ships. Now this number to me is kind of high. 200 people a year. But the one number that stands out to me is this. 10 to 15 people a year go missing on cruise ships. 
I don't know about you, but I'd rather be dead than missing. I don't, what the hell is that? People just go missing. They don't know where they're at. Can't account for them. That's it. I, I thought that was a very weird uh, statistic. Now, in America, lo uh, domestic flights, we average two fatalities a day on domestic flights. As I told you guys before, I found out that it's just common to die on planes, a lot of stress taking planes. Um, but it's never talked about because it's a common thing. So domestic flights average two fatalities per day. I'm gonna give you these numbers that I found, which I found very interesting. Not really the number of actual murders, but I found violent crime numbers. That's how they do stats, violent crimes. 2018, let's talk about Dominican Republic because everybody's dying, everybody's being killed in Dominican Republic, that's what I'm hearing. 2018, Dominican Republic had 1,722 murders. Also in 2018, they had 2,100 violent offenses. Violent offenses can be robbery, battery, etc. Violent offenses. Chicago in 2018 had 539 murders. Okay, Chicago. But they had 22,000 violent offenses. New York. Murder rate went down in New York. 292 murders. Way to go, New York. We're doing better. Accompanied with 29,000 violent offenses. Okay. So, those are just some stats I threw out. I'm going to read you this amazing article. I think it was from CNN. I've got to get the source. I was so, I was so in awe when I read it with the facts, and I actually looked these facts up that I didn't download the link, but I'll find it. Let's see here. Okay. So this was posted recently. Um, U.S. tourist arrivals up 8% for June 2019. The U.S. media campaign is failing. U.S. State Department calls U.S. media reports on DR tourist deaths an exaggeration. Comparisons of similar sized cities destinations violent crimes as I said they do violent crimes a different way they do it by the hundreds of thousands meaning per hundred thousand people Las Vegas 36.83 per 100,000 people New Orleans 36.87 per 100,000 people Santo Domingo because it's by city not by country 8 per 100,000 people American tourist deaths Let's say it again, because America's the one doing all this media stuff. American tourist deaths per year. Las Vegas. 1,100 American tourists die in Las Vegas every year. You can go Google how many tourists die, period, from all over the world in Las Vegas. It's a crazy number. Mexico, 238 per year. Costa Rica, 31 per year. Dominican Republic, 19 per year in Vegas most of the visitors 6% to 10% are found in the room with no cause of death in the 50 most dangerous cities in the world index 43 are in the American continent 5 are in the United States the American Republic is not on the list the reported 10 U.S. tourist deaths by natural causes occurred over a period of one year, not in the three weeks that the media would have you believe. By the way, the current American tourist death toll for 2019 is eight. Eight people have died. At this pace, at the end of June, and this going into the seventh month, they're on pace to go less deaths than they did last year with 2.8 million visitors and 24 American tourist deaths. Uh, there is no one single case in the DR where cause of death has not been determined. And by the way, the FBI just released, they're gonna release their toxicology results this week. Heart attack is the determined cause of death for one in four of all Americans who die in the US. I told you guys before, I lost my brother, his brother, our cousin, in six weeks of heart failure. 
So it's really no surprise. I give these numbers to give you this. I keep hearing how astounding it is, how these numbers are going crazy and, 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 and Dominicans are killing people. We turned the narrative from death to murders. The fake liquor thing, as I said, I don't know. I don't think it's that rampant. These companies are not owned by Dominicans, so any uh, of the managers or the, or, the, or the presidents of the company have to sign off on, on buying the liquor, right? So if I'm the president of a resort and my liquor bill is $3 million and someone comes and say, hey, we can lower the bill to a million dollars, I've got to question why, obviously. And then you will find out it's fake liquor. But I don't know about that. I'm going to drink the mini bar tomorrow. I'm going to be up in the resort drinking everything from the mini bar. Hopefully I'm still here tomorrow. Um, also, <laughs> so if you guys heard, there was a couple of deaths in other areas of the world recently. A couple disappeared in the Bahamas. A person got killed in Hawaii by a shark. So when it popped up, a Dominican got on there and he said, oh man, next thing we need to hear is that the, the shark is Dominican. So he went and made a meme that said American tourists killed by a Dominican shark in Hawaii. I really, I thought it was hilarious. People thought it was hilarious that a Dominican shark would be in Hawaii. But some people really took it seriously. This is the problem I have with people. Do you even know where Hawaii is? And there's no such thing as Dominican sharks. But a Dominican shark killed an American tourist in Hawaii. This is what the media has you guys just in an uproar about. But... While I have Cousin Felix here, before I go into the resort, maybe it's our last interview, I don't know. How do you feel as far as your safety goes in this country? Let me turn it a little bit. Well, I would make a joke and say I'm scared, but I know it'll get blown out of proportion. But I'm so scared that after first visiting the island 23 years ago, that I'm here now on this trip, I'm actually moving into my house. Oh, nice. so I so I was so scared that I actually got a house here, and because uh, we're out now, we're going to Santiago. We're furniture shopping, but um, a lot of it is is just it's mystique, and a part of that is why the word mystery is what it is. You you fear things that you don't understand because you think that there's always a clear answer, and sometimes life just doesn't work that way. But uh, a lot of this is hype. And I've seen people, because I'm a YouTube type person, where I'm, I look at a lot of the stats in individuals' YouTubes and uh, I help out uh, Cousin Greg with his. So it's one of those things where, ask these people that are putting up negative videos about the DR, when is the last time you went to the D Dominican Republic? They haven't been. And if they have not been, they have zero right to speak negatively about it. Uh, there's been plenty of people I've seen come here have one bad trip. And typically here in this country, just like back home in the States, many times your happiness is going to be based on the choices you make. If you hear something real bad happen or somebody got hurt or, or whatever, first find out where all parties involved sober. That's going to be the biggest thing right there that tells you before. that if you're going to find out alcohol was involved. And just like driving in the States, if alcohol is involved, everything changes. Decision making skills change. So again, it's just, it's real sad to see a country this beautiful that is this cheap where you can really afford any type of life that you want here to see it broken down by people one who don't come two who have other agendas and and just there's a three who people are just ignorant to how traveling really works and remember when you get out of the united states you are going to lose certain things you consider to be comfort uh certain comfort items like you know air conditioning you can't go to a a third world country, second world country, and decide I want the room temperature at 72. There's just certain things that's called traveling. If you want to really experience the culture of that country, you're going to have to leave some of your American ideals or Canadian ideals back home and embrace the culture as it is naturally. And what's happening now is just real sad because most of these people talking and carrying this on, I guarantee you, if they've been here, they haven't been here for over a week, and when you come here monthly, and then when you start living here, it's just you really get frustrated by listening to people talk about what they have no idea uh, about. So I will say this. Now they released the um, the results. I told you right? right, saying that it was natural deaths, and people said no way, no way. So I told one of a guy I know. I said I don't care about the results. Americans don't care about the results. As I told you just a couple minutes ago, 
all we want to hear, and not me, I mean, you guys that follow the media, the sheeple as I call them, all we want to hear is they found two Dominican serial killers going around in coordinated events, different results killing people, or they found a gang of moto conchos sponsored by ISIS that have a plan to kill all American tourists. Someone said, why is it just Americans? No, it's not just Americans. A couple of Canadians, a couple of Europeans died as well, died of natural causes. It's just that Americans are creating this media stone. Now, as I said, I'm done defending, I'm done with all this. I'm just giving you stats right now because I think people didn't know stats before they talk. I posted in the last video, out of the top 25 tourist destinations, tourist destinations outside of America, number 25 on the list is Dominican Republic with tourist deaths. Excuse me. So that being said, enjoy your vacation wherever you go. But the reality is there's nothing to be afraid of. We're, I'm actually afraid of his driving, but that's about <laughs> it. I know I'm gonna get home though. So another video for me with information, I got the last part of my last trip coming up. I'm waiting for Cousin Bo to finish that. Um, and then I'm going to do the resort video. Well, I hope I'll be doing the resort video. I'll be at the resort. I'm letting you know I'm going there. I'll do a quick snippet of me going to the resort. Will I make it out of the resort? I don't know. I'm told I won't. But I can't tell you to come to the Dominican Republic if I'm not going to do the things in the Dominican Republic that you should be doing. So stay tuned. Uh, the tourist video is coming out. I'm a tourist now. Well, I'm more of a tourist. I'm always a tourist, but now I'm a tourist in the resort. And uh, appreciate you guys. Like, share, subscribe, comment. As you see, I respond to all my comments, even to the a-holes. Uh, I love all you guys. But uh, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm giving information because I'm, I'm reaching out. I don't just believe in following what one person says. You don't have to listen to me. Everything I told you, you can go and fact check for yourself. You know, I, I give facts. I don't just give blah, blah, blah and read headlines and say that's what it was. I can make this headline say Dominican Republic is killing everybody. And it won't be true. You know, people are doing this stuff for money. By the way, all these videos about Dominican Republic, there's no money in them. Uh, something about tourist deaths are, are locking down the, the ad sense. So there's no money. You know, I'm not doing this for money and, and, and likes. I'm doing it for facts and information. So you guys stay tuned. I've got the, this Paradise Island entrance. I've got the, um, the resort video coming after this. If I make it, hopefully I do. If I, if you don't see another video, I didn't make it. You guys, I'm getting good. this TV. <laughs> you, get, you get my porn collection. <laughs> Y'all be good. My friend, te te va a burlar, guaja, pero hay un problema aquí. Yo, tú tienes un aire en la calle, loco. Tú me pagas la luz, Sammy. Chara, tú me pagas la luz. Yo, pero eso es un aire. Tú no estás pagando luz, robando luz. Pero ahí dicen en mi country, yo no pasé calor y más no lo voy a venir a pasar aquí a Nueva York. Yo estoy loco. Un aire, loco. Tú estás en el aire. Cómprame uno, pero me acá. Échese para allá. Échese para allá que me está cayendo. Me está gastando el aire. Me está gastando el aire. La policía no pasa por aquí porque está todo frío. Yeah, I'm going to